NVIDIA today released two Jupyter workbooks that really demonstrate some of the amazing power that you can get from the Rapids QDF replacement for Pandas. We're gonna go ahead and install Rapids on a Windows workstation real quick, and then we will jump right into looking at what the capabilities are. After this video, I'm gonna do two additional videos where I go through each of these two workbooks and show some of the things that you can really specifically make use of Rapids for. So without further ado, let's go right to the web page here. We're going to click the install link and then we're going to go down to here for the operating system. We're gonna choose WSL2. Note the limitations. These are more limitations of WSL2. Only one GPU and direct GPU storage not supported. So we're going to go through and do this the preferred method with Conda. Now I've got a video that shows you how to do up through these first and these first steps here, and I have a link to it. It goes a step further even and installs TensorFlow, but you don't need to install TensorFlow unless you want TensorFlow. So I'm going to assume that you've already installed the latest NVIDIA driver, that you've installed WSL2 then, and that you have installed Minaconda into WSL2. Like I said, refer to that other video if you need help installing those. It's a surprisingly straightforward process. They've improved this tremendously. I'm beginning to get more and more of a fan of WSL2, so go Microsoft. Let's pop open our PowerShell window here, and I'm just gonna go right into WSL2. You should have Python already installed. Minaconda. Okay, Python's installed. This is good. We're going to use the Conda method. It's gonna create a Conda environment for you to make use of. So I like using the release selector here. It's a lot more straightforward. This reminds me a lot of how you install PyTorch. I am going to accept all the defaults. I'm gonna also install Jupyter Lab, and heck, you could even throw TensorFlow in if you so desired. So I am going to install I'm going to add it. I might use it in a future video. So let's go ahead and I'm going to take this, copy and paste it, and then we're going to go into the WSL2. It did, wow, <laughs> wonderful. It did grab a little bit of extra stuff here. So make sure you just get where it starts at Conda. There we go. Now we've got exactly here what we had here. So let's run this, see what it does. We will fast forward through this. This does take a while. There's a number of things getting installed here. And while it's downloading, let's have a look at some of the NVIDIA benchmarks. Just looking at some of the common operations that you're performing in data pre-processing, you can see the tremendous speed up over CPU. Merge, where in particular? I mean, you're searching all the time doing that sort of thing. And these notebooks provided by NVIDIA demonstrate this quite well. And some of the key use cases are real-time exploratory data analysis and time series processing. I know there's a project that I've done some research on that I'm really looking forward to trying this out on because it's time series in the medical domain. And we'll take a look and see what that looks like in a future video. It's really super easy to throw this in where you already have pandas. Many of the pandas replacements require you to recode from scratch. Here you can see that you had pandas in previously and you simply replace it with QDF. All right, I bet it's installed by now. And we're up and running. First, I'm gonna move into my downloads directory where I pulled those two workbooks into. We'll activate it. Okay, launching Jupyter Lab. And then you just control click one of these. And we are in Jupyter Lab. And here we can see the two. I'm just going to go to the time series one first. I'm going to do another entire video on each of these two notebooks that NVIDIA put out. They're really pretty neat. You can see the 
the GPU time, CPU time, and the speed up. It's quite substantial. I don't know that I'm going to necessarily get the same results here. I am not at all setting this up for a benchmark, for a formal benchmark. Heck, we've got screen recording software going on. We've got Windows going on. I'm sure these are probably Linux times. This is also using a earlier generation GPU than mine as well. So who knows? But not a formal benchmark. We're going to run this part. It's going to download these files. This takes a little bit of time. These are big files, so we'll fast forward through this. OK, that is done. Let's go ahead and untar them. You can see these are pretty big files, nearly a gig compressed. OK, and they're unzipped. Let's list them. This should look basically the same, except it's me that owns them now. And you'll see they're 3.2-ish gigabytes, so a little shy of 10 gigabytes worth of data. Definitely enough to blow out my 12 gigabyte laptop GPU. Let's run this. OK, the imports are done. This is the initial warm up that they do for their benchmark. We'll go ahead and run through this. All right, that's completed. Notice we have 28 gig of my GPU used. This GPU is also running the video display, too, I might add. Let's run this part here just to give us the data that we can see that it's present. And we're going to save the concatenated file to a CSV. That'll probably take a bit. But now we have one big file that has it all there. OK, now we've got one big file. And we are going to reset the kernel. That'll release all the GPU memory. Again, they set this up for a benchmark. So we'll do that. We're going to use NVIDIA SMI. Yeah, kernel's restarting. That's what I told you to do. So we're going to do NVIDIA SMI. And this is what they got. Their GPU was around 30% idle. Uh, six, six megabytes, so not not being used tremendously and 48 gig, which is for an A6000. So let's run SMI. A little bit more memory being used by mine, but I am running the GUI on this as well. And that probably accounts for the additional 7% utilization of the GPU. We'll bring Rapids online. And this is reporting about the same thing in the GUI. I'm going to read the data. And you can see the GPU getting its memory utilized. OK, it's loaded back in. We need to convert the date column. This is very common. That was quite, quite quick. And we can see that the date column has been converted. And this is the shape of the data set. It's quite quite big, 127 million rows, eight columns. And just print the helps to run the cells in order. And then we run this, showing you the total range of dates that that covered. Run that, get the tail. And here we're doing our first selection. We're doing a start time and an end time. And notice we are using this, the CP, the coupi, and. So we'll run this. This is our first real real query and instant. <laughs> I won't do any fast forwards for this. You really don't need them with Rapids, hence the name. And there's the values. And they note that the indices are not continuous. And that's because we've done a selection. Not everything's there anymore. And we can do kind of a count of missing columns. Let's do something a little more complicated. We're going to resample and group time series data. This can be quite slow in traditional pandas. We're going to make the date the index. And we're going to resample these to two days and perform a group by. So we're running this part instant. That's that's really cool. And run the head and sum. So you can see by using rapids the I mean that I would expect to be pretty quick, but it it goes by quite quickly. Other types of filtering and other things also 
go pretty quick. Now this part went slow, that's the import, that doesn't count. And then we, we run this. And it produced the dashboard of the maximum temperature per day. Really very, very quick there. Again, no fast forwarding occurred. Perform a similar on the mean temperature. Very, very fast. This is great for exploratory time series data analysis. I'm going to take a closer look really at this workbook, look specifically at what it's doing, especially some of the functions that they're adding beyond pandas, which are really not many. This is really very close to orthodox pandas code. Thank you for watching the video and make sure you subscribe so you see even more with Thank you for watching and make sure you subscribe to see more with the amazing NVIDIA GTX 6000 ADA and also Rapids.